Welcome to the fifth iGEM Academy video. I'm going to be talking about biobricks and the way that iGEM likes to put them in plasmids in order to make construction of larger plasmid constructs easier for everybody. So here I've denoted two plasmids and of course whenever I show you a plasmid I'd like you to imagine that it always has an origin of replication, so the place that it reproduces itself from, and an antibiotic resistance gene. So here I've shown two different biobricks, and of course biobricks can be just about anything. It could be a promoter, a ribosome binding site, uh, the entire gene for uh, a biosensing protein, and of course every biobrick is flanked by these two restriction enzyme sites, uh, ECOR1, XPA1, SPE1, and PST1 on either side. And we do this so that you're able to put biobricks next to one another and reform these sites on either side. Uh, and of course, I'm going to be walking you through that. So the reason that we can do this is because, for example, when you cut with ECOR1, you can expect that the sticky overhangs that are produced wouldn't match with PST1, right? So if you cut with ECOR1 and PST1, the overhang from PST1 isn't about to get back together with an ECOR1, right? You're not going to be able to close the plasmid that way. But something peculiar happens between just XBA1 and SPE1, which I'm going to show you down here. So these are the actual restriction enzyme sites for SPE1 and XBA1. And the cuts are made like this. So it makes the cut there, and the XBA1 makes the cut here. And we're going to consider this side. So I'll scratch this guy off, right? So this is the overhang, and I've redrawn that here. And for this guy, we're going to just consider this side. So this, uh, this guy gets unconsidered. And of course, you could just imagine that this is uh, like an intermediary sequence or something, right? So I've redrawn this down here, uh, and this is the sticky overhang for SPE1. And you'll notice right away that it could actually complement one another, right? And reform a bond, right? The G will, will form a bond with the C, the A with the T, T with the A, and the C with the G here. And so I've redrawn that down here as our kind of hybrid site, right? It's not really proper to call this a restriction recognition sequence anymore because it can't be recognized by either XBA1 nor SPE1. The, the site is completely different now. So this, this makes it irreversible, right? Like once this binds together in this way, th there's no restriction site that can cut at this location. Um, and I'm going to denote it as, as a yellow spot. So if we move back up here, you can imagine that if I want to take the BioBrick 2 site here, uh, the sequence here, and put it into the plasmid for BioBrick 1, I might want to cut in a particular way. So how am I going to cut? The S here, and the X here, and then I'm going to cut with the P here, and the P here. Right? You can see that clearly. So I'm going to start erasing fragments. So you can imagine that the intermediary sequence here ends up going away, right? So I'm going to neglect that guy, right? I've made the cut there, the double cut. And then the, the double cut here, I'm going to start neglecting the backbone, right? Like I don't, uh, I no longer care about this backbone sequence right up to there, right? Because it's made a cut there, and this guy's made a cut here. And now, of course, on either side, we have sticky overhangs, right? This guy is a sticky overhang, and this guy is a sticky overhang for their respective enzymes. And so you can see that this, this overhang here, as I described below, is actually going to be attracted to the overhang from XBA1, right? SPE1 and XBA1. And then the PST1 will, of course, gladly rebind with itself. So this essentially just gets inserted into this spot here. And so I've redrawn that up here, right? So you can see if we had started with... Uh, with this side over here, right? So we didn't touch these. We didn't cut these in our little construction scheme. So they remain the same. And of course, BioBrick 1 stays where it is. Next, we have that new hybrid sequence between the SPE1 and the XBA1, which I've denoted as yellow, like I said before. And then, of course, we have BioBrick 2. Then we have the S site, this S site, which went unchanged. And then we have the P site here, which... Uh, reformed with itself, and, and now we have that P site. And you'll notice, quite interestingly, that everything in here is essentially a new bio brick, right? You can't cut between them anymore, and they're now flanked by the same sites that you had on the original uh, individual bio bricks. So you've essentially kind of like reformed a new bio brick 
with these sites, which you can then continue to add to. So that's the kind of genius behind the, the iGEM uh, restriction site scheme, is that you can you know, double up these BioBricks as many times as you want uh, because they keep reforming the, these standard sites. So I think that's a good place to end, and I'll see you in the next video.